today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can use pixel art to edit your AI art. So platforms such as Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, Dali, Blue Willow, that kind of thing. You can use this program online to make some edits. There is a free version, which is still quite powerful, but also a premium version. Uh, I actually have the premium license key they've supplied me, so we're gonna check that out now. Now, there's a few, there's a whole bunch of options here. There's a batch editor if you're looking to crop or make sort of batch changes to your photos. I do have a more in-depth video which covers that as well as the background remover, which I think is something that'd be very handy for people who want to sort of create transparent images. So we'll check that out. Photo mash, more of a sort of handy for ID photos or putting images on shirts. But uh, what we're gonna focus on is just doing some basic edits. So we're gonna go to Design Express to start with. This is the simpler version and we're gonna add in some images and have a play. So I've opened up this monkey graphic that I wanna use that I made in mid-journey. And I can go through and I can make edits and do a little bit more with it. So you notice over here on the right we have layers and we have some tools on the left, things we can use to paint on. Maybe if I decide I want to, I can go down to, there's a brush tool here somewhere. I can click on that, I want white. I want the brush to be very soft. I can make it transparent because maybe I wanna add, like say a reflection to these glasses. So I can go through and actually edit this photo and do things like adding in little reflections or that kind of thing. Now I've edited directly onto the photo there, which is probably not a great idea. So I'm going to undo. And what I can do is click add to add a layer. I'm just gonna keep it empty. And now I can go through, add in my glare, take my eraser tool, which is here somewhere, oh, up here, eraser tool. And then I can actually go through customize that a bit and I can then click on this layer three dots right here and make the opacity down a bit and now we have like a bit of a reflection which is pretty cool so doing basic little artistic drawings on that is pretty handy but if I click on this image of the monkey itself I can mask this image so there's a few tools here there is animation but that's a little, I haven't actually explored that yet so I can't really give you too much info on that but uh, I can cut out this image and I can use magic cutout, AI cutout, and cut out the image that way. Now this is a premium feature, the AI cutout. So if you are using the free version, that won't work. So what we'll do is we'll actually reset, we'll go Control Z to undo. And because I have a plain background, I can just use the magic cutout to do that. So now I have this image that has been cut out. And what I can also do then is add in another layer. I choose image, and maybe I find a background. And now I've got this background here. And with this layer, I can drag it underneath the monkey. And now I've given the monkey a different background altogether. So that's actually pretty cool. And we can keep adding layers to this to create a more, uh, a better design. And we can even add some effects. So let's say this background, I wanna get it a little bit more of an effect to it. With the pro version, there are some cool sort of glitches and things you can try. So you've got a little bit of background glitch here. I can choose other types of glitches. I can choose a random glitch. So I can actually do things such as layering and adding elements by cutting out various different pieces of AI art and adding it to this image. But what's also cool, I click on this monkey and I can go down and there's an adjust and filter section here. I can go in and adjust the color. So maybe it's too bright or not bright enough. I can move the vibrance or the saturation to adjust the color, the temperature, so we get something that matches a bit better, or even the tint. I can make color adjustments to this in order to match the background or just simply adjust the photo. So it's a pretty cool thing. There's also a pop option here. So it makes the image pop black and white. So you've got some profiles and go auto, got toning. So if I want to make this two-tone, I can make it say green, crank that right up and you get like this two-tone color effect. I change this from red to purple. We get this effect here, but I'll bring that back down. And then there's other things such as scenes. We can add vignettes, glamorize things a bit. So you can actually go through and edit the lighting of the image and have a bit of fun with that as well. So it's a pretty handy tool. There's also some other effects in here you can try. So shades, you can choose to color the shades that way or other effects such as artsy or portrait. 
so we can change it and get some different effects that way. We get a bit more control over our art with this Pixlr program. And this is the basic editor. So what I'm actually gonna do is go back to home. We've got our image here. I'm gonna go back out and go to Pixlr E, which is the advanced photo editor. I'm gonna open the same image and I can go from basically from program to program. And now I have more of a Photoshop style layout. So if you're using pixel art and you're a bit more advanced, you can go through and use this, this layout, which is a little bit more like Photoshop. And you've got a few other tools here. So uh, if you're looking to edit out certain things, you can do things like the stamp tool here. So let's say I want to edit out this line here, the sort of like the lines above his eyebrows. If I, while I have this little X icon, I can just click above and then I get this brush. Well, I've got to have the right layer selected over here. So I'll click again, use that brush. I can also change the brush size and softness if I want to. I want to edit out the zip. Once again, if I start editing out the zip now, I don't get anything different because I've gone up here. So I'm going to undo that. So if I hold down shift, I can still click another area again and then come back and edit that out with that stamp tool. So you do have a lot of tools like you would in Photoshop here. There's also the healing brush tool. So if I want to get rid of, say, this little spot above his nose, I can just click on that, paint it a bit. It's actually not working the way I intended. So maybe this crease. I can make the size a bit bigger. And it's, it will sort of, it's supposed to sort of pick up areas around it. I don't know why it's not necessarily working. There we go, that's a bit better. You can see it's kind of getting rid of some of that and softening up those edges. There's also now an object version of that where I can click on, say, this here, and it will think about it. And it did remove it and then sort of came back. So I'm not sure what's going on with that one there, but um, you sort of get the idea. Maybe we can try this part here. So for some reason, it's not holding those changes. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, but have a play with it and see what kind of results you can get. But there's a whole bunch of other tools here, color replace. So I could choose a brush and I've got my color down here. So maybe I decide I want to choose red. Okay. I can now go through. I'm gonna just see what kind of results we get if I use this here, it kind of tints that area red. So you can actually make alterations to very specific areas and change the color on your images and even add text. So there's text here, I can click, I wanna add a text layer and say, welcome, something like that. Choose a cool font. Some of these are pro fonts, as you may have noticed. And I can make that feel white. Once again, this is a lot like Photoshop. Make it a bit bigger. Move it down. So that is pretty cool. It's essentially like a little mini Photoshop. I do recommend going in, have a play with this and see what you can get, what results you can get with your AI art. So I'm gonna go back to home, back out again. And one more thing I'm gonna check out is remove the background. So if you're looking to create a transparent PNG rather quickly of your AI art, you wanna select your photos. I'm gonna select, say, this image here. And it's gonna think about it and it's remove the background. Now, this is how it works for free. It has worked a lot better with other images, but this one, for some reason, we've got some issues. But with the pro version, I can fine tune. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna increase my brush and I want to restore areas. So I'm gonna just sort of paint in some spots. So you can see here, we can paint areas back in and then fine tune the background. So if we don't get quite the result we want with the AI, which it ha does do a decent job, but just wanted to show you this fine tune option. I can also choose the magic wand to click the white, or I can click on remove here because I actually want to remove the white and I can fine tune things up that way. We get a few artifacts. So this is, it's not 100% perfect. So I'm gonna undo that with Control Z, although that didn't really work, so we're gonna restore. And I'll go back to my brush, restore, add this area back in. So I can actually go through now, remove and adjust how it's cut out this image by taking certain areas, smoothing them out. 
So it's a little bit much over here. And you sort of get the idea. So while we have a bit of an issue with the hair here, I'm not too sure how you would handle that with this particular program, but you can see how powerful it is at sort of customizing what you cut out. So another thing you could do is simply soften the brush right up and just softly remove that area if you wanted to. It's really up to you. If you're using something like, say, Photoshop, you could select subject and it might work a little bit better, but considering this is more, sort of like a more basic version, it's actually a pretty powerful tool for cutting out certain things. So I've cut that out pretty quickly. I'll restore this. And now we can save. So I go apply, and now I have a cutout image. Uh, you might want to spend a bit more time on it to get better results than I did, but I click save all to a zip, and it will actually, or I can just save this one image, and it will save a PNG that I can open and has a transparent background. So now we have a transparent background. Like I said, spend a bit more time on it than I did. I kind of rushed through for the sake of the video, but to get the idea. So that's a very quick overview of how PixelR works. Um, I can go, once again, I can go back. I highly recommend checking these out. I do have a more in-depth video. I will pop a card up on the screen soon and pop a link in the description. It shows you a little bit more of how the whole suite works. I highly recommend checking out that video. But to make some basic edits, PixelR is a pretty powerful tool for AI. People use AI art generators to um, take their editing further. All right, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, I hope to see you again soon and have a great day.